today I'm going to show you the best way to hand knead bread. So, to start off with, we've got some our water, it's, it's chilled, it's, I've added the salt to it because for some reason the salt that I've got is just not uh, breaking down um, unless I add it to water and give it a whisk. So in here we've just got flour and some yeast. This is really just a basic dough that anyone can make and it's one of the first doughs that I teach on my How to Bake course added the flour to the bowl of water. Now the reason for that is because there's salt in the bowl. I don't want to lose any of that. I want my recipe to be exact. So I'm going to use my little red scraper. Now you don't have to use a scraper um, to go around the outside of the bowl. You can use the pincer method. And that is when you get your hand like a little claw like that and you just go around and rabble it around. But all I'm doing here is taking my left hand bringing that round while the red hand pretty much goes round and into and cups it in. Now this part is slow mixing so what I'll often do here is set a timer um, for the slow mixing so I know that I'm not going to overrun or under mix this dough. This is how it starts and then we're going to then drag it onto the table once we really feel that we're not really getting anywhere with hand kneading anymore. So now we're going to use our hands and again we're just going to do it really really gently. So this movement we just push away with one hand and drag in with the other just keeping it together and we're just going to do this really really gently. It's not a race it's about taking your time to do this properly. What you are doing at this stage is hydrating the flour that is the key thing and dispersing the ingredients so it's even. Now I just complete this method for around eight minutes each time I hand knead and that kind of equates to about half as much time as doing it by a machine. Pushing right hard on that table and the whole point of this is to get everything to bind together and making sure that our gluten molecules are going to be really nice and strong. Basically, we just keep going like this for the time that you need. Pushing it away with one hand, folding it back, turning it away. And you can get a little bit more efficient by it, or pushing away, doing a double fold, bringing it back to you. But it's that pushing and that dragging on the table with, with that part of your hand, the, the, the palm, the lower palm of your hand. And we just repeat this, repeat it, until we get to the point where there's a bit of strength in that dough. Your dough now is going to be quite warm. So you may choose to put it in the fridge to cool down for 10 minutes or maybe even half an hour. Um, and that will just bring the temperature down and make it a bit easier to knead properly. And of course that's going to aid the fermentation at the same yes. time. The first way when we get into fast mixing is to kind of throw it around like that. And uh, that's kind of how my uh, mum taught me to just sort of throw it on. Um, then we can get, to, it's not that efficient though, and uh, you do just kind of annoy your neighbours if you've got anyone below you. Um, then we've got a more, um, slightly more efficient way. And that's to throw it on like that, and then fold it over. So you're going to fold it into a ball. And it will work, and you can make good bread like that. Fold it over and again, and chuck and fold it over and again, and then you can kind of see where it's gone a bit longer there. You throw it on its side, throw it down, throw it down, throw it down. Okay, um, and you know that is using the action against the table to really do the damage. Next up, we've got the French way. Now this was really. Um, really become popular in the past sort of 10 20 years everywhere um, and it's kind of where traditionally French bread which was the original of uh, the quality bread that we have these days was you was made using traditional 
uh, mixing methods and these mixers were really slow and they kind of did it very very gradually. Now to make those breads we kind of need a different tact and they now brought back this kind of French kneading technique. We'll throw it on the table like that and then you fold over like that and then stretch. It's called the stretch and slap I think. So throw it on this table like that, fold over and then stretch and then turn it again. And the more you stretch, the more action you're having on that day. And what this is also doing is trapping some air when you're folding it over. That fold there traps air inside it, so it's going to be oxygenated at the same time. Now with the French way, that's um, a really, really credible way and it does really, really work and use throughout. But if you want to really need your dough a little bit extra, I found that that technique, you can just go on for hours and hours and nothing really, really happens. So if you're making something where you want a really strong structure for like sheer batter or for catcher or something, it, it just doesn't really go anywhere. This way is the ultimate way to knead bread by hand. So take your piece of dough and stretch out. So it's kind of a technique that I've borrowed from the French technique. Um, and you start off stretching it a little bit and that encourages it. And then you do a fold. So, so stretch and you do 10 of these or eight to 10 and then you fold it over like that. And that brings it all together. And then you just keep stretching. And fold over, stretch. Then you're gonna clean the table with this technique as well. And the harder you throw at the table, the more action that's being taken. Whilst also, you're not warming it up. You're not using your hands to warm up the dough as much. So you can actually knead it for longer without it all getting soggy and separating and sticky. So you just pick it up and throw it on the table, throw it on the table, throw it on the table. And then you turn it around, give it a little fold, roll it up into a little roll and carry on again, trying to stretch it. And you just repeat this process for as long as you can handle it. It will work, it really needs your day. And I really recommend that you try this one. And it works also with wet doughs. It, it, it's harder when you've got a drier dough, a stiff dough, um, because it, it doesn't like to stretch as much. But if you're doing a wet dough or anything really artisan, um, this works a treat. And there you have it, the stretch and slap technique. Give it a go and let me know what you think in the comments below.